What's going on, everybody? I am back after 10 years of being away from the YouTubes. Uh, we are self-isolating with the, the uh, virus, which shall not be named, scare of 2020. Um, and I know you guys are all being good citizens and practicing uh, social distancing and self-isolating. So th there hasn't really been a better time to get back into YouTube uh, <laughs> as right now. Uh, we're out of toilet paper here. Um, but we're hanging in there. We're doing okay. Um, so I wanted to put together a training series on Lightroom Classic CC for beginners. So this class will be mostly tailored towards uh, beginners. Um, so we're going to cover the basics here. Might get into some of the advanced con concepts later. We'll see how that goes. Um, so Lightroom Classic. Um, so if you're looking at Adobe, uh, and getting into the whole Creative Cloud thing. Uh, you might notice that there's like two different versions of Lightroom that they're offering right now uh, in March of 2020. There is Lightroom, and then there's Lightroom Classic. So Lightroom is more of like their cloud um, sort of photo editing service where you're you're uploading your photos to them and then editing them, editing them online. I think they, that the application itself can be used in, in um, multiple different uh, formats. So you can use it on your tablet, in your phone, uh, web browser, that kind of thing. Whereas Lightroom Classic is the standalone application that you install on your machine. You keep your photos on your local machine. Um, and, you know, oddly enough, Lightroom Classic, I think, still has a little bit more features than the regular version of Lightroom. Um, so it's, it's weird branding. I, I don't really understand what they're doing, doing right now. I think obviously they want to eventually migrate people over into the actual Lightroom version where everyone is putting all their stuff in the cloud. Um, I don't really like that. That's not my bag. Um, I like to have all my photos locally on my machine and, uh, Lightroom classic is the tool for that. And it also is the more advanced application, I think, which is strange. So if you're hearing, you know, Lightroom Classic, you might think, oh, this is a, um, this is, you know, an, an older version of the application. It's not as good. All the new stuff is in the, the regular version of Lightroom. That's not entirely accurate, I don't think. Um, so this training is going to be focusing on Lightroom Classic. Um, so just keep that in mind as we go through uh, these training videos. Um, and yes, as I mentioned before, you will need a subscription to this. That's the way Adobe does their software and stuff now. So um, just keep that in mind. If you're not sure if you're going to be using all, all of the Adobe suite, you can just get the regular photographer plan that they offer, which I think just includes um, Lightroom, Photoshop. And I know their, their Adobe portfolio website builder thing. Um, maybe it includes Bridge. I'm not entirely sure, but I think that's pretty much it. Whereas they have the full Creative Cloud subscription that you can get for, um, you know, a lot more money, but it includes access to all of the applications. Um, so if you're if it's approaching some sort of holiday or sale, you can just sort of keep an eye on it. Sometimes they they offer a deal where where you can get it for a year for like cheaper. Um, I got the full Creative Cloud suite on Black Friday for like thirty bucks a month for a year, which to me is a great value because I use a lot of those applications in there. Um, but if you're just getting started out, you're not sure if you're even going to really like this, um, start with the photographer plan. It's a little bit cheaper. Um, it's, you know, at the most, I think around 10 bucks a month, um, which, you know, get it for a month, try it out. If you don't like it, cancel. So anyway, um, that's my opening spiel. Let's get to it here. Um, gonna hide myself here. No one wants to stare at me the entire time. Uh, so here we go. Okay, so uh, here we are. Um, ideally, you have um, you have installed Lightroom Classic. You have managed to uh, do that, um, and you probably had to get uh, an Adobe account in order to do that. And you've signed in with your uh, Adobe account, and you'll see your name uh, up here in the top left corner. Uh, here we are. Uh, this is what it should look like after you get everything installed and set up. Um, this is sort of the main view right here, and this top right section is your navigation. Um, so, you know, you can click these little tabs to move into these different modules. For this uh, training series, we're mostly going to be staying within the library and the develop modules. I might get into these later, but honestly, 99% of the time that I'm in here, I'm only using the library and the develop module. Um, map, 
allows you to geotag your photos, um, which I don't really do. Uh, book allows you to uh, lay out a photo book, and then you can, um, I think Lightroom partners with the company Blurb to actually produce photo books. Um, otherwise, you can export it as a PDF, and then I think you can send that book layout to uh, another company of your choice if they accept that kind of PDF layout. Uh, slideshow is building just a um, almost like a PowerPoint slideshow of your photos. If you're doing a lot of presentations for other couples and, um, I don't know, groups and things like that, slideshow can be useful. I never use it. Um, print, you used to actually print the photos uh, on your own, like photo printer. I never use that. I always ship my files off to an external company to get prints. And then web allows you to make a web gallery, um, like a HTML5 web gallery, and actually spits out the HTML that you can use to put up on your own site. Um, I have used that once in the past, but for the most part, I haven't. Maybe I will look into that at some point later. Um, but this first section of the class, we're going to start with the library, and then I will do another series on the develop module where we actually edit the photos. Um, but library is all about organizing, cataloging, uh, setting metadata, um, all of that good stuff. Um, so ideally, here we are, you've, you've installed Lightroom, you're set up, um, and you know, that, that's just a quick tour around the, the, the interface. Uh, on the edges here, you can see these little arrows. So if you want to collapse different panels, you can click them and they'll go away. Um, you can see if you collapse it and then just hover over it, it'll come back. And then if you move your mouse, it'll go away. So um, this kind of thing is more handy in the develop module if you want a little bit more space. Um, but I generally leave all of these panels open. The, the, the first thing I want to talk about before we get into much about Lightroom is the concept of the catalog file. So let me see if I can find, here it is. So by default, uh, when you install Lightroom, uh, this is on Windows, um, in your little pictures area, you'll see a Lightroom folder. And then right here, you can see this Lightroom catalog. So what Lightroom is, is it's a non-destructive editor. So when you have your photos in here and you make changes and you, you, you edit them, you're not actually editing the photos themselves. What you're doing is it, those edits are being saved in this catalog file, which references the photos stored on your machine. So for example, you know, if you might bring in, um, you know, a handful of photos in here, you might make some edits and some changes to them. And then if you were to actually go to the physical location of the photos on your computer, um, and you, you know, went in there and you opened the actual photo, the photo would look as if you just took it out of your camera. It wouldn't have any of those edits to it. And that's because the edits themselves are stored in this catalog file. So when you're working with Lightroom and you're working with your photos, there are two sort of pieces you need to um, be aware of. That is your photos themselves, and those will be stored on your machine. And then you want to be uh, aware of this Lightroom catalog file. So for example, if you are going to be migrating to a new computer after you've been using Lightroom for a while, um, or you want to transfer uh, all, all of your photos to another machine, you want to make sure you bring this catalog with you. Otherwise, uh, the photos aren't going to have any of the edits or any of the changes um, or any of the things that you made. So if you're being a responsible uh, photographer and you are backing up your photos, you're also going to want to make sure you back up this catalog too. Um, you know, in case uh, of, you know, uh, data corruption or, you know, your hard drive crashes and you need to you know, get a new machine. Um, if you don't have this catalog file, you're not going to have any of your edits. Um, you know, you'll still have the photos if you've managed to back those up, but you will have lost all of your edit history and you'll have to go back in and re-edit those photos. And over time, if you have thousands and thousands of photos in here and you've made thousands and thousands of edits, uh, you're not going to be too happy if you lose all of that work. So by default, uh, Lightroom will prompt you to back up this file when you close the program, I think maybe after a day or two. Um, and you can actually set the uh, frequency of how often that gets backed up and where. Um, so it's important to keep in mind here, uh, with Lightroom, you have a catalog file. If you're moving to a new version of Lightroom or a new computer and you download Lightroom again, you will want to import your existing catalog file, uh, and that will have all of your edits and the um, reference to all of your photos. Okay, uh, 
Another thing before we uh, get started is I want to just briefly run through the settings. Um, so if you go up to edit preferences, I don't really uh, change too much in here from the default, but I'll just uh, quickly run through these tabs. Um, so on the general tab, let's see, show splash at, at uh, startup, automatically check for updates, load most recent catalog. I, I leave all of this uh, default. Um, uh, something else you might want to be aware of if you are shooting in your camera if you shoot raw and jpeg files at the same time uh, and you by default if you import them into lightroom you're only going to see the raw files it's not going to show jpegs at all um, when you go to import them so uh, if you want to import both of them and see both of them in lightroom you want to check this box so treat jpeg files next to raw files as separate photos um, but without that checked, if you go to import, it's only going to import the raw files, I think. So that's the first one um, that you want to uh, be aware of. Uh, let me see. So the external editing tab is another thing you might want to uh, take a gander at. Um, if you're going to be opening your photos in Lightroom, or if you're going to, excuse me, if you're going to be opening your photos in Photoshop to make to make further edits, um, this is just the format of uh, that Photoshop will open the file as, or um, that, that Photoshop will save the files back to, to Lightroom as. Um, I like to keep them as PSDs. This is just my choice. Um, we're not going to get into the major differences between the two. Um, feel free to Google or look on YouTube for, um, you know, I'm sure there are complete videos on why you would want to choose one or the other. Um, but for me, I usually do PSD. Um, and then let's see, file handling. I don't think you need to worry about anything here. Uh, performance. So, so the performance tab, this is the other tab that you might want to be aware of. If you have a machine that has a nice graphics card in it, you can leverage the power of that card uh, to sort of give you better performance when you're editing your photos. I have found that in my case, by turning this on, I get better performance. Um, so I go to, uh, I, I change this drop, drop down from auto to custom. And then right here, you can see this checkbox, use GPU for image processing. This is process version five or higher. We will get into what process versions are later. Um, but in my case, I do want to check this box. I find I get better graphics. Um, I, I, I find that I get that Lightroom. I find that Lightroom just behaves better. Uh, it works faster, a little bit more, um, efficiently when I, I have this checked. Um, I currently have an R9 390 uh, AMD card in there. Uh, this is card is a little bit older. I think it's probably four or five years old at this point. Um, but I find that with this checked, it just seems to, you know, the application just seems to flow a bit better. I don't know if this exists on, on the Mac. Um, if you're using a Mac, um, you know, I, this sure might display something um, a bit different. You know, if you're, if you're on a MacBook, doesn't have a dedicated GPU, you might not see this in here. So uh, just be aware if you're if you know your machine and you know you have a dedicated uh, good graphics card in there, you might want to come in here and check this box. Um, if your processor is a little bit weaker, this will uh, give you um, a little bit more of a boost when you are trying to edit. So so in terms of uh, in terms of options, those are really the only things that I I change. Um, other than that, I basically leave everything else where it is for now. I think uh, another thing, if you go edit uh, catalog settings, I generally set my preview quality to high uh, and then automatically discard previews after 30 days. Um, so what this is, is, is if you have a high megapixel camera, um, it, it takes a lot of power to constantly display those at their at their full, um, full res. So um, what Lightroom does is it, it generates previews um, and it doesn't, it doesn't display the full image uh, until you zoom into it. So what, what this is, is it, this just says by, by default what preview quality you want and then automatically discard that preview after a certain number of days if, if you're not going to be um, looking at that photo um, for a while. It just saves space in your cache. Um, and uh, yeah, so I tend to keep it at high, uh, standard preview size, um, auto, um, general the the general tab will show you where your catalog file is and here's the backup thing that i mentioned earlier so um by default once a week when you exit lightroom it will offer to back up the catalog file 
uh, and then you you can change in here um, how you can change in here how often you want that to happen. So every time Lightroom uh, exits or um, when Lightroom next exits, um, you know, once a month, never, whatever. Um, I generally have it set to once a week, um, and that is fine for me. Uh, so that is the catalog settings. So those are the settings. All right, so I think that's gonna do it for the first one here. Uh, on our next video, we're actually gonna get into the good stuff. We're gonna import some files, get our catalog set up, and I will walk through the import process. Um, so thanks for checking out this first video, and I will see you guys in the next one.